Okay, my load balancer is ready. I can see my three instances are in service. So now if I'm copying that DNS name here and connecting, well, I should be load balancing all my instances. The problem is, you know, the page is identical on each instance, so, you know, we see nothing. <laughs> as far as we know, that load balancing could be hitting the same instance all over again, we wouldn't know. So, let's fix that. Let's go back to my compose file and I'm going to deploy a fantastic version 2 of this application. So, just change the tag in the compose file and just redeploy the service. Right? That's all I need to do. And as you will see, ECS picks up the new task definition and, and creates a new one, version 7. And obviously all containers will be stopped and replaced with new ones. So let's uh, look at this in the console. Well, that was fast. So it killed all the old ones and is starting a new one. So actually, this is a pretty dangerous situation here because my service is down, right? And version, all the version 6 uh, containers are dead and uh, the version 7 containers are not starting, have not started yet. Why is that? It's because I set this parameter minimum healthy percent to zero. And what this says is uh, actually, it's the percentage of containers, of uh, uh, older containers, that should always be running at any time during deployment. So if you set this to zero, you know, basically ECS is going to kill them all, uh, make room for the new ones. For a dev environment, that's fine, you know, it's, it's the fastest way. Uh, for a production environment, you definitely do not want to do this because, as you can see here, you know, for, for a few seconds, my service is down, right? Until the newer ones are running, you know, your service is down. So do not set this to zero in production unless you're ready to uh, to tolerate downtime. It's going to be really short, but still, it's downtime. And especially, you know, in a microservice architecture, you probably don't want to do that either. Um, so depending on how many instances are running and how fast you want the upgrade, the rolling upgrade to be, uh, you uh, you are going to set this between zero and one hundred percent. If you want to do green blue deployment, you could keep that one at one hundred percent, set maximum at two hundred percent. So at the same time, you would have let's say three containers of version six running and three containers of version uh, seven running, um, and and you could do your testing, but in that case you would need more instances because since our uh, container is running on fixed port 80 and unfortunately there is only one port 80 per instance uh, if you have three instances you can only have three containers so if you want to have static ports and 100 percent of the older containers and 100 percent of the newer containers then you need to have twice the number of instances so uh, you know it's a balance between uh, i would say uh, the size of the cluster, the, the speed of deployment, and whether you want to do green-blue or whether you want to do a rolling upgrade like I did. Okay, and once again, keep in mind, if you set this to zero, your service will be down, maybe only for a few seconds, but it will be down. Okay, anyway, um, my newer containers are running, and so now if I'm going to index 2 PHP, which is the new page in version 2, I see the container host name. And now I can see this is balanced, right? S somehow. If Firefox is not uh, is not hiding stuff from me. Right? Okay, well, Safari is doing the same, but you get the point. Okay, it's load balanced. Okay, uh, so I think that pretty much sums up 
uh, the, the demo, that first demo, where we looked uh, extensively at uh, creating a cluster, deploying a service, scaling a service, and looked at a lot of, uh, lots of EC2 stuff in the process. So now the only thing left to do would be to shut down that service. So I could do stop. which uh, should take the number of tasks for that service to zero, yes. Okay, so ECS is going to kill all those containers. Mm -hmm. That was fast. Killing is always <laughs> faster than launching, isn't it? Um, I could do uh, delete if I wanted to. So that's really going to delete the service itself, the task definition, etc. So if I'm looking at the cluster now, and as you can see, the service is gone, right? And finally, oh, I need to delete the load balancer. Otherwise, it's going to complain since that was a manual operation. Yeah, should be gone in the auto scaling group as well. <coughs> yeah. Okay, good. Mm, slight problem here. Tiny console bug, but that's fine. Okay, so no more load balancer. And now I could just go and use the down command to delete it, right? And it's going to delete the instances, delete the VPC. And as you can imagine, you know, it's doing the all of that through CloudFormation again, right? Running the delete stack uh, command on CloudFormation, okay? And that takes a few minutes. Okay, uh, well, that concludes uh, demo one. So let's summarize all of that. What did we see here? Well, again, we saw how to use ECR, build an image, push an image, deploy it, uh, scale it, uh, load balance it, and we looked at the full, uh, the full roster of EC2 features. And uh, to summarize, or maybe to generalize what we did, this is what we did, right? I mean, we created a cluster, uh, launched a service, but we could have launched multiple services. Um, everything was running on a fixed port. So that's fine. It's uh, it's good to use with the ELB, which likes to have uh, fixed ports uh, to, 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 to check. Uh, however, uh, the downside of this is, as we mentioned earlier, there is only one port 80 per instance. So uh, in, if you use fixed ports, you can only run one uh, container for a given service on a given instance. And that's what we see here, right? We have three copies of service one, but they are on different instances. And the same goes for service two and service three. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, that's good, but you know, it can be a limitation where if you need to have 20 copies of service one for whatever reason, then you need to have 20 instances. So in some cases it might be slightly inefficient from you know from a resource point of view to have that many instances uh, just because you need to deploy uh, copies of a single container. And um, obviously when you move to a microservice architecture, you know it just gets worse. You know, it gets fun, but it gets worse because uh, now imagine you have a platform built from 20, 30, or 50 microservices. Um, and the reason usually why you do that is to, to allow development teams to build their own microservice independently and to, uh, you know, to work parallel um, from each other. And, uh, and, and they want to deploy them and they want to fix them and uh, all in parallel. So a microservice environment is going to be ever, ever moving, right? Just it's in constant chaos because of deployment, because of maybe A-B testing, green-blue deployments, 
not to mention servers you know going up and down all the time so you know it creates a very dynamic environment where um, uh, you know distributed state management and scheduling are all the more important and you have a number of questions that you need to answer if you want to use containers uh, in a microservice environment so the first one is can you deploy and scale each of them independently uh, can you run multiple copies of a service on the same server you know we saw that was a challenge in the previous demo um, how can a microservice register its name its service name and its port automatically and uh, the reason we want to do that is because they need to discover each other right and uh, so you need to have some some central authority that knows uh, where to find a copy of a given service right uh, IP address port etc and obviously uh, if you have many copies of a microservice running uh, can you load balance them efficiently and of course we can otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you today so actually the the first answer uh, we already we already saw that right that a microservice can be deployed and scaled independently from all others on ECS uh, as long as a microservice as it's a separate docker image and a task definition and a service definition you can scale them up or down independently from all the others how do you run many copies of a microservice on the same EC2 instance, ECS instance? Uh, well, we saw that the problem was that you if it's not possible if you used fixed ports. So you have to let Docker assign a random port, which fortunately Docker can do for you. But now if you have random ports, how do services uh, discover each other and how do they register to, in order to be discovered? Well, we're going to use um, a piece of software called Registrator, uh, which is not an Amazon uh, project. It's an open source project. And uh, it's going to be deployed on each instance as a container. And uh, the cool thing about Registrator is that it's able to detect uh, uh, starting containers. And uh, so when a new container starts, it's going to grab its, uh, its IP address, its uh, name and port, and it's going to send that to console. Uh, and uh, console is a, another important part of that, uh, of that demo. Uh, it's a distributed key uh, value uh, server, and uh, we're going to look at that. And so for now, just keep in mind that console is going to be that central authority that knows where all services are running what their names are, what their ports are, and are they alive or are they dead? So yeah. console will be the, the right guy to ask when you want to do discovery. So actually, how will we do that? How will we do discovery? Uh, so console can be uh, invoked using HTTP, RPC, or DNS. And uh, so we're gonna use DNS because it's, uh, it's, it's lightweight. Uh, it's, it's easy to do uh, DNS resolution in any language there's an API for that all the time and uh, and since console is the central authority we're going to deploy on each instance a console agent again in the form of a docker container and we're going to run that agent on port 53 uh, which is the DNS port as we all know and so in effect that agent is going to run as the DNS resolver for the instance so for normal DNS resolution it will forward it to an external DNS server but for service resolution, uh, and which is what we're talking about here, it's going to use that information stored in console and send back some uh, some information to uh, to the caller. And we're we're going to look at that. And now, last but not least, load balancing. How do we load balance that thing? Um, and the tricky part here is that since all our services are going to be running on random ports uh, how do you do that because today uh, ELBs uh, can only load balance on a fixed port right as we saw in the previous demo so 
we have two cases here. We have what, what I call internal services and user facing services. So internal services, we kind of answered the question already because we said we, we were going to do DNS lookups. So if service one wants to locate service two, uh, it's going to do a DNS lookup, uh, a standard DNS lookup, which will be answered by the console agent running on port 53. And, uh, and the answer will be an SRV record, which is a special type of record in DNS for services, which has a, a TTL of zero, so we don't have any caching issues or anything. And that uh, that SRV record holds a service name and uh, and an IP address uh, and a and a port number. Sorry, an IP address and a port number, which is exactly what we want uh, in order to uh, for for a service to call another service. So for internal services, internal resolution you know, uh, DNS is the way to go. Now, uh, for user facing services, internet facing services, it's more complicated. So from the external world, let's say we want to use port 80. So we're going to have an ELB on port 80. Uh, but as we said before, that ELB cannot directly load balance services running on random ports. So we need to have something in between that is running on a fixed port. And that something is an, another great piece of software called Fabio, which is again an open source project, uh, which is an, uh, a zero configuration HTTP, HTTPS router. And so we're going to run that Fabio guy on each instance on a fixed port. We're going to use 9999, which is the standard port for Fabio. Um, and that will keep the ELB happy. And how will Fabio know how to uh, balance traffic into to the to the user facing services well because fabio is able to grab all the console traffic and all the console events uh, on the network so whenever uh, an agent is going to talk to the to the console server saying hey or whenever a registrator is going to talk to the server and saying hey this new server uh, this new uh, container started um, uh, Fabio is going to get that uh, and build automatically its uh, uh, its routing table, if you will. So that's why you know it's called zero configuration because you are really uh, you start Fabio and it starts picking up uh, information from console and building the routing table. And all it takes is to uh, a little configuration in console itself. Uh, to have health checks and uh, and prefix etc. Not going into those, those details. I don't have time for that. Uh, but uh, you know, send me an email if you want all the all the nuts and bolts. But it's very very easy to do. Um, just uh, a couple of environment variables <coughs> in the in the task definitions and um, and uh, and registrator is going to use that and console is going to use that and Fabio is going to use that. So it's really really. Uh, easy to do okay so just a picture to summarize all this crazy setup so what I'm showing you here is you know uh, my three instances okay big orange blocks one two three um, the black squares are the infrastructure uh, components and the white blocks are the uh, the actual services so I'm going to show you an application built of three microservices the, the internet facing one is called uh, portal the and it's using two internal services called stock for uh, stock market information and weather for weather information I'm going to show you that in an instant okay um, the black uh, square so Fabio the uh, ECS agent registrator and console on port 53 and so how does that work? Um, well, when you, the user, are sending a request to that application, it's going to go through the Internet Gateway to the ELB. The ELB is going to pick one of the Fabios, right? And so the Fabios, because they get the console traffic, uh, are going to uh, each, the Fabio, let's say we, we go to that one. So that one is going to pick one of the portals, any of them, right? Doesn't have to be one of the copies running on the same instance. It could be any of them because, you know, again, it has the distributed uh, uh, information from console. And so it's going to pick, let's say, this one, right? 
Um, and so this guy is going to do a DNS resolution to get uh, uh, access to a stock service. Uh, let's say this one and through DNS, right? So it's going to it's going to go to console and console is going to return the um, the IP address and the port number. So say this one. And uh, the portal is going to do the same thing for weather. Uh, and let's say this time, so it's going to go to the console agent again. And let's say this time it gets that guy. Okay, so it, it gets access to the two services that it needs. Okay. So once again, go through the gateway, go to the ELB, go to one of the Fabios. Fabio built dynamically a routing table using uh, console information picks a portal and then the portal does two DNS lookups locally which are very fast uh, to get access to a stock service and um, a weather service right and again all this information is grabbed when containers are starting there it's picked up by a registrator and sent to console right so it's fully dynamic so the, the only weak point here is that my console server is not uh, uh, it's a, it's a standalone server uh, i did not add a high availability for console which in the production environment is something you want to do but you know you have to stop somewhere and uh, speaking of which i'm going to stop the video right now and we're going to jump into that second demo and see all this stuff in action okay <laughs>